Jerry Sanchez and Ryan Sark are coming to you today to discuss the mid-sized multifamily property in the Charlotte MSA we had on the contract, and we had to cancel our deal last week at the end of due diligence. We wanted to bring you some of the lessons learned from this process. Uh, before we do so, just a little bit about myself, Jerry Sanchez. I'm a New Jersey-based multifamily investor uh, that focuses on the Charlotte uh, MSA and the Greenville, South Carolina MSA. Uh, Ryan, uh, give us a little bit more about yourself and uh, ride on. Sure. Yeah, thank you, uh, Jerry. My name is Ryan. I'm part of Ride On Asset Management, a company that I founded with my father. Uh, we currently focus on the North Carolina, South Carolina, so the Carolinas as a whole, as well as Kentucky markets. Um, kind of that whole Sun Belt, though. And we're focusing on B and C class assets. We've been in this for about seven years now and have closed a total of 80 doors. Um, and, you know, just looking to continue on this path. Excellent. So uh, a little bit about, again, what we, we do here, Ryan and I uh, had teamed up uh, just about a month and a half uh, prior to this deal uh, that we're talking about today um, in a project in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, we were able to uh, be able to work with the uh, same operator on that deal who was also on, on this deal in this uh, Charlotte MSA market. And it was a smooth transition. We were able to get in uh, very early into the process. Uh, we flew down to the town uh, about two or three weeks ago at this time yep. for the due diligence period. So uh, again, we want to just uh, use this to, to go over some of the, the lessons that we learned. Um, you know, first, let's talk a little bit about the property itself, which, um, you know, as we mentioned, it's, it's a uh, it was a 1969 build, um, uh, you know, in the 20s in unit size. Um, and the, the under contract, uh, it was, I believe, uh, in the end of August. Um, and the PSA was signed uh, about a month later or so. So we got in, you know, uh, feet ground running and took that trip. So I guess, you know, give a little bit of uh, Ryan about your opinion about working with uh, the team that we had. Yeah, yeah. So um, as you had mentioned, um, we have been working together for a little while now. We've known each other and have been speaking weekly for at least over a year at this point. So it's about time we partnered up on something. Um, but we, I think we had a strong GP team in place here. And it was interesting because, as you mentioned, we partnered up with another one of the operators, one of the lead operators um, on another deal about a month, two months prior to uh, this recording date. And this, it was a little bit interesting to me because we actually had a, a few people, I would say, extended on this GP compared to just three of us or four of us. Um, it was made up of a couple people that are newer to multifamily and some that have um, quite a bit of experience. And we were somewhere in the middle of that. So I think what was interesting to me about this was that we there were some common ties that brought everybody together and obviously a shared goal of um, working at this, getting another multifamily under contract and operating that successfully. Um, one of the things that um, one of the things that was kind of fun about it is that we all did not know each other prior to this, but despite that, um, during our first couple calls and we would have calls weekly and, um, continuous emails, everything else going on. So we chatted regularly about this. Um, but we actually, especially on the asset management side of things, um, took time to speak and figure out exactly what role everyone was going to play so that we didn't step on any toes. And we really tried to look at everybody's experience and say, hey, you're probably best suited for this portion and you are best suited for this portion. Um, for instance, uh, myself, for example, um, we have a building not far away from this market, about an hour away. And there was overlap in these two areas of the property manager. So we were able to bring in my property manager at that property and use plans to use them for this. So I was going to be the point of contact for the PM um, and work very closely with the PM. There was another person on the team who had 
uh, recently built a duplex and from the ground up, and he was going to be kind of most, he's going to be the lead for working closely with the vendors along with uh, myself and a few others. So I think we worked very well together. And the biggest thing that we found was setting those, setting those roles up from the start so that we, we knew exactly what we were doing. And there was no questions on who's going to perform what and you know, if this is going to get done or not, we could just ask. Um, and it saved everybody else time in the long run, too. Absolutely. I agree. Um, and then also, you know, one thing to, to, to also, um, you know, be clear, too, is, you know, there was a, uh, an ex very experienced operator that, that was, uh, you know, a part of the lead uh, team here. Um, because, you know, you do also, while everyone works together, uh, there are times when uh, decisions do have to be made and there'll be different opinions. So you do have to have a, a leader uh, or that, you know, is able to um, bring it, can, everyone to a consensus and also be willing to make some of the tough decisions and, uh, you know, when not everyone is in agreement. So that's something that the team also had. Yeah, I agree with that point. And it's it really well put. I do think for the most part, um, as a whole, we were, we were pretty cohesive and had a very similar opinions on what we wanted to get done which was a good thing. But for those couple tough decisions, it was very nice to have somebody that's, he's been through this <laughs> way more than most of us have been. So let's, um, you know, because the purpose here is to kind of go over the lessons learned uh, from this particular due diligence process. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. due diligence is so important. Um, you know, we, we, you know, we'll, we'll fast forward the fact that the deal was underwrote. Everybody was in agreement as far as the number that we uh, put into the deal, um, the CapEx, uh, things like that. Obviously, we knew we had to, to go through the due diligence process and, and tweak from there. Um, but, you know, uh, let's, let's kind of take us to the day of uh, uh, we were out there for two days, uh, day one. We get out there, you know, tell me about, you know, when you get to the property, walking around, uh, what were some of the, the systems and processes that you used and um, how did they work and some of the things you might want to do better next time? Yeah, absolutely. I do think it's worth pointing out, though, that prior to being on site, you definitely want to have those systems ready to go so that you're not scrambling day of. Yeah. Um, and you want to have your schedule set. You want to know exactly when all of your vendors and contractors, um, that when they're going to show up and that you have somebody to walk the property with them. Um, so in terms of actual systems, processes on the day of, I do, one of the things I really like to do is um, have all of my folders set up in some sort of cloud service like Dropbox or like Google Drive, something similar to that. And I like to have every single unit um, named uh, as a separate folder. And that way I can go in and actually take pictures in that app and it, it loads it directly to it. Um, and that goes back to just saving time on the, on the back end, but also making sure that everybody on the team has all of those pictures, all of that information, any notes right away. So that way, if anybody else needs to look at it, because not everybody on the team is going to go through every single unit, but somebody on the team is going to have gone, will have gone through all of the units. Um, so collectively we've gone through everything. So I think that's a great way to share information. Um, in terms of other things that I like to do the day of, it's, it's definitely, again, keeping with everybody's strength and working with people that know the area well and know every single um, portion well. So having the property manager there is very important. Uh, because he's able to, he or she are very, very quickly can look at the property, look at the area and the neighborhood and say, hey, I think your guys' business plan is great, or maybe you need to tweak it here and there. Um, yeah, no, I think that's, that you have to analyze the neighborhood of the property you're in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that since we're, all of us were coming from out of town, uh, we were, some were driving in, some were flying in, we were all taking Ubers, we were coming in. Uh, everyone uh, made a, a, a an attempt to also look at other apartments, complexes in mm -hmm. the area. Uh, I think uh, that was something actually that ended up being uh, very beneficial for us, that there was a property nearby that was already purchased uh, about a year ago uh, and newly painted, windows done, and kind of we were able to comp right away, like, okay, this is going to be 
the price that we're going to be looking to take this property to. Uh, it turned out, you know, using resources that we had, uh, uh, we actually knew the, the owner, um, the operator uh, in our group was able to make a phone call and, and get some information on both their property, how many renovations they had done, how, how their rents were going. And it turned out they also had some information on our property as they had, which makes sense, looked at it yep. as well. Uh, so, you know, just being able to look at competitors' rates in the local market in, in general, uh, it's, it's an important part of the due diligence process. It's funny how small this um, multifamily space is <laughs> when somebody on the team knows that other person right down the street. Um, it's interesting. It's very helpful. And it seems that most, are, most operators are actually willing to help out other operators, which is great. And we had also an interesting aspect that came across of uh, you know, something that I never thought about going into a due diligence process, but make sure that you get in touch with town officials, learn about properties. Are there any complaints? Are there crime? Are there any violations? Uh, while we were on the property, a town official came and visited us and gave us some much needed information. Uh, Ryan, I know you followed up with that official and got actual reports. You want to give a little more information on that? Sure. Yeah, and that's that's actually something that I ha I had done on previous properties, but not act not in person like this. So having that opportunity to speak with a um, somebody within the police department on site was very informative, and it's interesting that you know, and it makes sense that these people that are working for the town, whether they're cops or or firemen or women or anybody else um, in the ambulance. You know, they're all trying to make where they live and where they operate a better place. And this guy was no exception. So when he had seen us on the property, he could tell, you know, something was a little different about us and our group and um, probably saw some of the, the vendors trucks on site as well. Um, clipboards, etc. cetera. Uh, and he quickly asked us if we were there purchasing the property or inspecting it, you know, what was going on? And he was willing to help us out with a lot of different information and tell us what was going on, what he had seen from driving around this property in this neighborhood over the past couple of years. And there were all sorts of different violations, everything from, from smaller things like um, people not picking up um, after their pets or maybe trash on the exteriors of the dumpsters or people possibly dumping that don't live there. So he had mentioned things like lack of lighting is an issue on the property, um, noise complaints, minor, you know, um, was loitering, stuff like that. Um, and then also it said other things like, you know, there were a bunch of cars that were towed on site, uh, just, just a bunch of different things like that. Uh, actual conditions of the units had been um, something that was mentioned to him. So he was able to pull a list for us and between him and other people within the police department, we were able to get some really great information on the property. And actually on the last email, he did say most of those violations were closed, meaning they were fixed, which is great. Um, so, um, you know, although this isn't going through for us, I'm very happy that it's getting better for the tenants that are living there. Um, and, but I do think that going through that process and following up with town officials at the police department, um, and you can also call up people in the fire department, see if there's been any fires or any other sort of, sort of emergency calls, just to get a better history of what's been going on there. Yeah, yeah, I, invaluable experience there. Mm -hmm. So you know, now you know, we unfortunately the the down you know of this, we 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 had to walk through, um, and you know, when you get back, you looking at the information, you go through all the units. Uh, we were there for two days. Um, and, you know, you know, you realize uh, at some point, you know, what you have budget in terms for CapEx um, is not going to, to cut it. You're, you're, there was more that needed to be done here. You know, it was a property that had been neglected. Uh, and, and quite frankly, to do this right, to take this property to where we were, you know, already had comped out, we were going to have to increase our, our budget. Um, and um, talk a little bit about how we came about that uh, uh, and, you know, just in terms of the budgeting and coming up with a CapEx uh, number. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to start with uh, as a GP team, 
we all had agreed on our underwriting prior to going down for due diligence, prior to going in, under contract. There was um, one person who was in charge of the underwriting, but he, he did a very good job with it. And we all agreed that this looked correct based on all of the information that we had. Um, once we were down there, however, we had all, as I had mentioned, we had all of our vendors in place, everybody from plumbers, electricians, general contractors, roofer, um, sewer scope, a couple other people that I'm forgetting. And we were able to get information from all of these professionals, whether that was verbally or through reports, and compile that and actually figure out, hey, where are we going to um, actually line up on our budget? And where do we actually think this is going to be? So, so what did we had budgeted versus where we actually might end up. And unfortunately, after running the numbers, it looks like we were going to be over by about a third, which is pretty substantial, <laughs> no matter how you slice it. Um, so looking at everything, we, we continued to run our numbers. We continued to look at the underwriting. We did our best to adjust everything and to see where we could maybe skim a little money off or can we do a turn slightly differently and still meet these projections that we had and in the end and you know jump in let me know what you think but in the end we after running all of these numbers we decided we really don't have the option to move forward at the current price unless we are going to severely under renovate these units and this team it was very clear that we didn't want to skimp on these units we didn't want the property to continue to be a c c minus type asset our goal was to bring this up um, to maybe a c plus a b minus and make it a safer more desirable apartment complex to live in and we just didn't see that being feasible with the budget that we had in place so our option when we although we wanted to move forward our only option to move forward was to try to negotiate the price slightly yeah absolutely i mean and and it's you know to it's a it's a disappointing uh ending um obviously a lot of time and effort um mm -hmm. you know money there's vendors that they you know they get paid for going out there um so you know there, there was a lot put into this so the last thing you want to do is have to uh, walk away or, or, or have a, a deal uh, canceled, but uh, you are going there with the the purpose of of uh, putting together a deal that's going to work for your investors and meeting certain uh, market return metrics. And in this case, we were also looking at this as as a longer term deal in a good market uh, that you know, we were having the opportunity to assume a loan, not have type of interest rate risk that, that others are going to be facing over the next uh, year or so. And it was with the purpose of, like you said, taking this property to that level of a, of a C plus in a potential B area in five or six years. So mm -hmm. it just, you know, did not align with, uh, uh, you know, doing something, you know, as they say, lipstick on a pig and, right. you know, just having the same problems resurface in two or three years. We, we were going to do this the right way. Yeah. And I think what you had said just now about not being able to meet our investors' goals is, is it's really, that's the number one priority here is, you know, I think we all realize that there's a fiduciary responsibility of the general partners. Um, and number one is not lose that principle. Number two is try to make the return that we're projecting. So if we don't feel like we can hit those projections, then why are we moving forward? Why are we going to create all of this work for us when we're not even going to meet our goal? And, you know, I think um, maybe you could touch on the market a little bit more, but we really did believe that this is a solid play. As you mentioned, great interest rate fixed for a number for about seven more, eight more years. So there was plenty of time to, to, um, follow through with our business plan but you know i think being the conservative underwriters that we are and not trying to overshoot anything we felt like it was a little too much of a risk but you know give us give me a little bit more of your take on this market this this portion of the charlotte msa because i know you know you're a big north carolina guy 
you know, I just, you know, uh, you know, when you just from the minute you get out on the airport and, uh, you know, you're driving across the, the various sub markets in Charlotte, you just see a tremendous amount of growth, uh, you know, just, uh, the construction goes, you know, in, in this particular area here, I was near uh, the, the NASCAR Speedway and uh, the hotels on um, there. Were, there's, you know, a great uh, Wolf Lodge, uh, um, just, you know, growth all around. Um, I love when I go on these trips, I talk so much to uh, the Uber drivers, uh, people that are moving in from Chicago, from New York, from Florida, uh, and just tremendous growth all around. And And I think, you know, that's just goes with what you see all over the Carolinas um, from, from, you know, Raleigh all the way through to Charlotte. So, you know, it was definitely a play on the fact that the growth was going to continue. And, and, you know, obviously there's some potentially um, uncertain times in the economy, but what, what's driving the growth down there, the story is still the same. Um, and there's, there's jobs and there's opportunities and people are going down there. So that was not, you know, going going to change, and I think that's something that we learned a lot. And at least you know, next time something comes up in this particular area, you're going to jump on and you'll be well, very well versed in the area. So that's what you know. Always look at what you can, you know. What do they say? It's uh, this was a seminar, right? Another learning lesson. Yeah. That's you know something. Just uh, we got really good uh, inside depth knowledge of another local market. Right. Oh, absolutely agree. Um, and. You know, this is the best way to learn. If we didn't actually go down there, if we didn't work with this team um, for these past couple of months, who knows what would have happened? Um, you know, we we never would have gotten to this point, but we never would have learned intimately about this market, about this property, worked with these vendors, and realized, yeah, this is a definitely a viable market for us in the future, and these are people that we could work with too. So I think that was extremely important. Um, and, you know, although this fell apart, there's there's so much potential in the future for us to work together again and hopefully in this market or similar MSA, similar portion of the MSA. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, we hope everyone uh, they, you know, took, you know, enjoyed our, our, our discussion on the topic and the lessons that we learned. And uh, we look forward to uh, coming back with some new news about uh, the next deal um, that we may have and work together. Appreciate uh, everyone listening and taking the time. Yeah, thank you so much.